talking with uh, Bill Harrelson, who has a number of flights of distinction in his logbook. Uh, Bill's from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and uh, he flies a, a home-built Lancer. What engine's in it? It's a Continental IO 550. IO 550. Anything special with the engine? A few the things. Truck? It's basically an N model okay. uh, with uh, 10 to 1 pistons, uh, an external uh, oil cooler, and external oil filter. So it's, it's pretty much stock except for the 10 to 1 pistons. Okay. And how much power did you get? Well, uh, stock is uh, is 310, so we're probably getting you know more than 330. Okay. At wide open power. Okay. And you built the airplane yourself? My wife and I built it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, she helped. Good. Good. She, we should we should all have. She, she managed me doing it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, now the airframe itself. Uh, what did you do special? Because I had heard that you were building this airplane for this trip. You had some. How long have you planned on setting these world records? Uh, eight eight years. Eight years. Great. And and what did you do with the airplane to to enable it to fly these distances? Well, several things. The main thing was the fuel system. Okay. Uh, every airplane has plenty of room for more fuel. Yeah. What every airplane doesn't have is plenty of CG envelope for more fuel. So we did everything we could to get weight forward. We moved the engine forward an inch. Um, we uh, built it such that we could remove the rudder pedals on the right side, get fuel tanks all the way up to the firewall. Um, we uh, built a, a grand total fuel capacity of 361 gallons into an airframe that the normal fuel configuration is about 80. So a lot of extra fuel. Uh, because we knew we'd be flying these long oceanic legs, we built three uh, independent uh, electrical systems, three alternators, three batteries, and all kinds of cross-tie capability in between mm -hmm. those. We built in uh, an HF radio, an HF uh, trailing wire antenna, and we built a SATCOM uh, antenna into the tail. Uh, that's did you have fuel pumps on the tanks, on the individual fuel tanks? No, not on the individual fuel tanks. What happens is all of the tanks, the wing fuel and all of the aux tanks, feed gravity feed down to a manifold at the low point in the system through valves. I control which, uh, which tank is flying through valves. And then from the valve, I have three pumps. Only, only one is needed. But I have three pumps that pump up to the header tank. The engine runs only on the header tank, okay. and those three pumps each run off one of one of the independent electrical systems, okay. uh, and can here again can be cross uh, fed to, to run off any of the others. Well, Bill's first record was from Guam, Guam to where was it? Florida, you landed? Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida, and he flew this in a 38 hours and 39 minutes nonstop, and uh, the distance was uh, 7,000. Yes, uh, I think 7,114 nauticals, I, I believe. Pretty good. You burned uh, 300, well, you started with 361 gallons of fuel. Correct. And he landed with six gallons of fuel on board. That's correct. Okay. How did you feel that last 50 gallons? We were, we were all concerned. When I say we, myself and the ground crew, we were in constant yeah. communication. That we knew it would be close. But the fact that those last six gallons were in the header tank was a huge advantage. They had been in a wing tank, you know, a, a six foot uh, long, few inch thick wing tank. You really wouldn't have the confidence. But the header tank is uh, about uh, 15 inches tall and rather compact with a sight gauge on it. Okay. So if I see six gallons on the sight gauge, I know with a great deal of confidence that I have six usable yeah, gallons. Yeah, in it. Sure. Well, with that much fuel, what about uh, CG and handling the airplane? When the airplane was loaded at, at uh, that weight, it's about 50% uh, above recommended max gross weight, okay. and the center of gravity is considerably aft. Uh, this uh, makes the airplane quite unstable. In addition to performing poorly due to the weight, it's quite unstable due to the CG. So it's unstable in pitch because of the CG, but with the uh, fuel going all the way up to the ceiling, yeah. It's actually uh, unstable in a roll because the CG is so high. So it's an ugly flying airplane, but it's normally uh, a very nicely flying airplane. Sure. It's ugly to fly in that configuration. You can't use an autopilot for about five hours. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you mentioned something about trim tabs. Uh, you use a larger trim tab I, uh, I, because all the leverage of the moment. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I basically double the size of the uh, pitch trim tab. That's for, did, did you have an engineer helping you design this? The, 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 the plane for the trip? Or did you just kind of no, calculate it yourself? No, we kind of did the calculations and thought it out ourselves. Okay. Uh, Bill's wife, Sue, is also a retired airline captain, so there's a lot of aviation experience in this family. Yeah. Does she fly the plane much when you aren't ra you know, racing or going for a record? Well, when we're doing these records, it's a one-place airplane. Yeah. So, so... But when you're not, does she, does she like... And yeah, if we're, if we're going somewhere together, she'll fly every other leg. Yeah. Okay. Usually. Okay. Bill's second trip was a pole-to-pole -pole trip. And this was a speed race, but it wasn't a, a non-stop race. And uh, what was your distance on that? Uh, total distance we flew was about 36,000 miles. 36,000 miles. Okay. <laughs> and how long did it take you to do that? Uh, 20, what did I say? 24 days, I believe. 24 days, 8 hours, 6 minutes, somewhere around there. And that's an FIA record? Yes, it's an okay. FAI record. So, so you were on the ground. You'd stop and rest, refuel. Yes. Yes. And and they allow a certain amount for that. Well, they allow whatever you want. The uh, speed is calculated by your total credited distance. Okay. Divided by the total time from your first takeoff to your last landing. Okay. So if you want to uh, take a couple of weeks off and go surfing in Hawaii, that's fine. Not against the rules. But, oh. the, but the clock is ticking the whole time. Okay. So your speed is going down the whole time. Okay. I didn't know you could serve. <laughs> I guess you have to learn how. Yeah. Well, tell me about your engine. You use cam guard in your engine, right? Uh, faithfully, yes. Faithfully? Uh, did, did, did you have the engine overhaul before the trip? Did you just put it in the airplane, fly the time off, and then just keep track of the maintenance and put cam guard in? Or, or tell me a little bit I, about uh, how you found out about it and why you use it. I had uh, Barrett rebuild the engine. Barrett Precision Engines in Tulsa, sure. Oklahoma, yeah. and uh, boy, they did a fantastic job. I mean, yeah, it was good. I have 1,500 hours on it now, and nothing has gone wrong with it, and, and uh, it uh, burns hardly any oil at all. Matter of fact, on the Guam trip, 38 hours, it burned about a half a quart. Half a quart of oil in 38 hours. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Probably not as incredible as you might think, in that normally in 38 hours you have 25, 30, 35 cycles. Yeah. And when the engine's cold and you start it up, everything's loose, you know. Okay. And uh, you probably burn as much oil during startup as you would during a couple of hours of flying. Where this 38 hours of continuous operation, everything was up to temperature, everything was tight. Mm -hmm. And so it really makes sense that it should burn less than expected. But still, a half of, a half of port is, is tremendous. Uh, yeah. A tremendous uh, compliment to Alan Barrett and his engine shop. Yeah. Uh, when uh, do you do oil analysis on the airplane? Oh yes. Yeah, okay. Sure. Uh, have you noticed? What have you noticed using the cam guard? Uh, have you noticed anything positive or negative? Because it's, it's difficult to tell in the real world. You usually have to look at the oil analysis. Yeah, and uh, and but you bore scope your engine, don't you? I bore scope at uh, every oil change. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Scope of compression check, okay. Okay. Uh, wax. Okay. Uh, what we've noticed, I haven't, I can't really say I notice anything uh, good happening because uh, we've used cam guards since break in, uh, okay. since just after break in. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, oil analysis has been stellar uh, every time. So it was, the, the, the trend is flat, but it's a very good flat. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's nothing sticking out that you'd notice. No. Okay. No. No, I mean small variations in the in the metal content, and, uh, but always in the green. So you know it works. So there's no question about not using it. Oh yeah. As long yeah. as it'll keep working. Yeah, I'm happy to keep using it. What is your next adventure? Uh, well, we're tentatively thinking about a um, uh, another North Pole trip uh, late this coming winter, and with uh, with a couple other airplanes. Uh -huh. um, we're working on organizing that. Okay. Are there many records to be had? Sure. There are always records to be had. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I always encourage people who have any interest in record setting to uh, uh, to set records. You can always set point-to-point -point records. Those are somewhat easier. Mm -hmm. You can find uh, two city pairs that perhaps have never been flown before, and you're almost guaranteed to <laughs> set, set the record. But that's a good way to start into it. The major records 
Uh, the speed records around the world and polar things like that are, are a little tougher, but mm -hmm. um, sure, my record can be broken, and if somebody's interested in breaking it, I'll be happy to help them. Cool. Well, would you do the Grom trip, trip again? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. a long airplane ride. Yeah, I bet it was. Okay, well, we're talking to Bill Harrelson here, a, a happy cam guard user who has set some records and and uh, it, actually, you, you set a, a level for the rest of us to aspire to in our dreams to get to do something with our airplanes. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.